We're going to do eight problems where we find the domain and codomain of a transformation. In the first set of problems, we're given the size of the standard matrix for the matrix transformation. In the second set of problems, we are given the equations describing the transformation. In each case, we have to figure out the dimension of the domain Rn and the dimension of the codomain Rm. If you need more of an introduction to matrix transformations, there's a link in the description to my lesson on that topic. Let's begin with number one. We're told that the standard matrix A has size 2 by 3. So what's the domain of this transformation Ta of x? Well, since the standard matrix has size 2 by 3, that means there are three columns, one for each of the input variables. These columns might correspond to x1, x2, and x3, and each row will tell us how to combine these three input variables to get the output variables, which we might call w1 and w2. So we can see that the domain is actually r cubed, and the codomain is r squared. We're going to get two components in the output. All right, let's try number two. A has size three by two. Obviously, this is just going to be the reverse of number one, but just to explain it again, for the standard matrix to have a size of three by two, that means there's going to be a column for each of the input variables, maybe x1 and x2, and then each of the three rows will tell us how to combine those input variables to get our three outputs, w1, w2, and w3. So certainly, the domain is r squared, and the codomain is r cubed. Next, number three, A has size one by five. At this point, you know that the number of columns is the dimension of the domain, and the number of rows is the dimension of the codomain. So the domain is R5, and the codomain is R1. We have five columns, one for each input variable, and then one row telling us how to combine those input variables to get the output variable. Finally, number four, the standard matrix has dimensions four by four. That's an easy one. The domain is r to the four, and the codomain is r to the four as well. In this next set of problems, we're given the transformation equations. Here's problem one. We can see that there are two input variables, x1 and x2. Meanwhile, we have two equations, one equation for each output. Each equation tells us how each output is calculated based on the inputs. Hence, the domain is r squared, and the codomain is also r squared. Again, there's two inputs, and in this case, there are two equations, one for each output. Now, we said the domain was r squared, but technically, the domain of this transformation could be defined to be r to any power, as long as that power is at least two, because it could just be that those additional components, x3, x4, whatever, are just not part of the computations for the output variables. It could just be that the output variables don't depend on those additional inputs, and so we don't see them show up in the transformation equations. But we'll assume that's not the case for these problems. We'll assume that the only relevant variables are the ones that actually appear in the equations. Moving on to problem two, you can immediately see that we have two input variables, x1 and x2. x2 here, x1 and x2 here, but we have three equations. One equation describing how to obtain each component of the output vector. So the domain is r squared. We have two input variables. The codomain is r cubed. We have three output variables. Then looking at problem three, we have, let's see, x1, x2, x3, x4, and that appears to be it. So there are four input variables. Hence, the domain is r4. We also have four equations. One equation describing how to calculate each component based on the input variables. So the codomain is also r4. In problem four, we have one equation. So the codomain is actually just the real numbers. There's one equation describing how to get that one real number output. On the other hand, we have one, two, three, four, five separate input variables. So the domain is r to the five. This is a linear transformation or matrix transformation from r5 to 
R. So that's how we determine the domain and codomain from some information about transformations, whether it be the dimensions of the matrix for the matrix transformation or simply the transformation equations. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and be sure to check out my linear algebra course and linear algebra exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind, two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count and calculus, I'm the V to the T my parameters. The rapidest happens like this. My lectures, the most prominent, dominant. Call me the Morgan, I get the compliments. The union in together, like any time that we intersect, cause my opponents know they need.